today we're going to be going over the top five no recoil and the fastest time to kill loadouts in warzone that you should be using so if you find today's video helpful let's try to hit a like goal of 500 likes i'd really appreciate it and make sure to subscribe if you are brand new around here and make sure to turn on notifications on all so that you never miss a brand new video every time i upload so today i'm going to cover all the attachments for all these loadouts as well as their recoil patterns so we're going to use this website that shows us real data of how these weapons stack up against each other and show you the time to kill and the damage ranges because obviously in warzone that is very it's important for the first loadout we're going to go over the cr 56 amax so this is one of the new weapons that was introduced in season four when you compare it to the other assault rifles in the game i felt like this was much needed to be included in the top five so for the muzzle we're running with that monolithic suppressor barrel is going to be the xrk zodiac and the optic is going to be the vlk optic now the reason why you're going to see me use this optic in most of my loadouts is because it actually reduces your recoil even though the game description doesn't tell you that it reduces the recoil so the vlk as well as the solo zero nvg enhanced do control that recoil so for the ammunition i'm going to be running with the 45 round mags and for the under barrel we're going to be running with that merc foregrip because of that hip fire accuracy the recoil control and the third hidden stat that people don't know about is that it actually increases your movement speed all right so as for my secondary goes i always run overkill for my first loadout so that i can have a weapon that will handle the close range combat for me and i highly suggest that you guys start getting in the habit of running overkill on your first loadout because you are going to need weapons that can compete at close range and to clear out buildings so for my secondary i'm going to give you guys two options mp5 and the uzi are my two favorite smgs to use in warzone because of time to kill as well as that mobility barrel is going to be the monolithic integral suppressor laser is going to be five milliwatt laser stock is going to be ftac collapsible ammunition is going to be 45 round mags and the under barrel is going to be the merc foregrip perks should look like this for your very first loadout it's going to be eod overkill and amped and lethal and tactical is all personal preference I usually use C4 and heartbeat sensor. All right, so ranking it at number four, the Growl is one of the best weapons to use in the game. The fact that it has a really fast ADS and movement speed, you know, this is also what factors into most casual players' decisions about using a weapon because of its user friendliness. So for the muzzle, we're running with monolithic suppressor. Barrel is going to be the Tempest 26.4 inch Archangel barrel. This attachment is purely optional. You don't have to use it. But if you want a much faster ADS, then you should use the TAC laser in Warzone or if you don't want to use tac laser and you want more of an accurate shot from long distance and up close you could put on the vlk 3.0 optic as i stated earlier in the video but this is all personal preference you don't need to use an optic if you don't want to the iron sights on the growl are absolutely amazing very easy to use and spot enemies from long distance and the nice thing about the growl is that you could actually use this up close and personal if needed it feels almost like an smg so for the underbarrel we're running with commando foregrip and the ammunition is going to be 60 round mags all right secondary is going to be the same exact mp5 loadout just as i stated and later on i'm going to give you guys some options for the uzi all right so for ranking in at number three we're going to be running with the m4a1 loadout so this is my preferred m4a1 loadout some of you guys may have some things that are different but for me personally i found much success using this exact same loadout and so have many others who have seen my m4 loadouts in the past so my monolithic suppressor is going to be for the muzzle stock m16 grenadier is going to be our barrel vlk optic for the optic and the ammunition is going to be the 60 round mags under barrel is going to be a ranger foregrip so this is where most people might have some questions why i'm using the ranger foregrip this is what helped me get the best accuracy results from long range and i used to use the commando foregrip but after the mid-season update in season four i noticed that using the commando foregrip wasn't as viable as it once was and most of you guys did agree with me that using the commando foregrip just wasn't the same on the m4 so it's always important to constantly test out your attachments to see if you're setup is still viable after every mid-season update and that's why i make multiple videos of the same weapon every time there's an update to keep you guys updated and informed as well ranger foregrip works exceptionally well for me if i'm trying to get the best no recoil as possible all right so here's my uzi preferred loadout if you want to go the uzi route versus the mp5 so for the muzzle i'm going to be running with a monolithic suppressor barrel is going to be the fss carbine pro 
stock we're going to be running with no stock and the ammunition this one is very important and why a lot of people tend to doubt the uzi every time you say you like the uzi is because they're not running this attachment right here which is the 41 ae 32 round mags this one is going to completely transform the uzi and make that time to kill super competitive with the mp5 and it also does offer a lot more range than the mp5 then for the underbarrel we're going to be running with the merc foregrip all right so for my last two loadouts you know you could either place one or the other at number one or number two it really just depends on how you look at it. And that's why we're gonna take a look at this website to help us determine, and maybe you can let me know down below in the comments, which one you would actually rank first. All right, so for me personally, I felt that the Kilo had to rank in at number two. All right, so for my muzzle, I'm running with the monolithic suppressor. Barrel is gonna be the Syngard Arms 19.8 inch Prowler. And the optic is gonna be the VLK 3.0 optic. Ammunition is going to be 60 round mags and the underbarrel is going to be the commando foregrip. Now, one thing I do want to clarify is that the reason why I use commando foregrip and sometimes I use the Merc or the Ranger is because it depends entirely on the recoil pattern of the gun because not all guns have the same recoil pattern. So in this case, Kilo is going to be running with the commando and the accuracy on this gun is absolutely amazing. Now for the number one ranked, no recoil and most reliable weapon in Warzone, I am going to be going with the M13. I personally felt like this one was the best one to use, not only because it's fastest time to kill from long range, but also the user friendliness of this weapon as far as aim down sight and movement speed go. So for the muzzle, we're going to be running with the monolithic suppressor. Barrel is going to be the Tempest Marksman. Optic is going to be the VLK 3.0 optic. Under barrel is going to be the Merc foregrip. Again, this one has that vertical recoil. So you do want to reduce that as much as possible. And also having more movement speed doesn't hurt as well. And ammunition is going to be the 60 round mag. So now that you've seen my top five no recoil and most reliable loadouts in Warzone, let's go ahead and switch over to this website and take a look at the stats and just compare and contrast the damage ranges and the time to kills. All right, so we're going to be looking at this website called TrueGameData.com. So this website was made by an engineer who tested every single attachment and weapon in the game at 240 frames per second. So this means that we're going to get the most accurate and reliable results that we could possibly get. And you should go ahead and check out his socials up here in the top left hand corner if you have any questions for the creator. Creator. so make sure to follow him and show some support links will be down below in the description so here we have all five of our weapons here plus the an94 because i know some of you guys are going to ask turbo what about the an94 you know how good is that so i just left this here just for you guys to be able to see it but long story short an94 is trash in warzone definitely would not recommend using it at all anybody who says it's viable in warzone is probably on a heavy dosage of the placebo pill <laughs> so that's all i want to say about that but here are the stats if you guys want to see that so all of these weapons have all the attachments on their loadouts so that we can get an accurate description and see which one is best used in warzone as far as ranges go the kilo does have the best amount of damage range here and the m4 and the growl are tied here at second place and the m13 comes in at third place and the cr56 comes in at last you're gonna get the fastest ads speed on the growl that's the reason why the growl is one of the best weapons to use in the game for most people you aim down sights really quickly so sprint to fire time and tactical sprint to fire time are going to be the same across the board for all of these weapons now for movement speed you're going to get the fastest movement speed on the cr56 now the reason why is because the cr56 holds the smallest amount of extended mags at 45 round mags so uh, with that said i don't think that just because it has the fastest movement speed it should factor your decision which one you want to use because it only has 45 round mags you need more than that to be able to down your opponent and also be ready for the next gunfight you're probably going to get caught reloading and it's just not going to be practical in most situations the fast this ADS movement speed is going to go to the M4A1 at 2.28 meters per second. Now, this is when you're aim down sights and you're strafing left and right in a gunfight. But just because it has the fastest ADS movement speed doesn't mean that it's going to be the best because how often are you going to be strafing left and right when you're engaging in long range combat? Most of us are going to be standing stationary. Now, for vertical recoil, it's pretty much even across the board here for the Kilo M13 and the M4A1 and the CR56 AMAX. Now, I would definitely run with either the Kilo or the M13. Now, I do understand that the M4A1 has a 49%, which has one of the highest here with the CR56, but that doesn't mean that it has the best recoil pattern. That's why in the next portion of the video, I'm going to show you guys the recoil patterns of all these weapons and also what it looks like when you're trying to control that recoil. All right, as far as horizontal bounce goes, the edge will go to the Kilo, mainly because it has the best recoil pattern. And also we are running with that Commando foregrip, which is going to help with that side to side bounce when you're heavy firing your weapon. Now, hip fire area, I wouldn't worry about this too much because how often 
are you going to be hip firing with your assault rifle that is a job for the smgs so that's also something you have to recognize is hip firing with your assault rifle even if you're at close range is not really going to be effective you have to use your smgs they're going to have a much smaller hip fire area bullet velocity the edge is going to go to the kilo and the growl you're going to see that later on in the graph that they do dominate in these damage ranges so so here is the interesting part and why this website is so instrumental in learning so much about weapons we're going to be putting on three plates because most opponents that you do run into are fully plated and we're going to change the shot location to the head and we're going to go over the different shot locations by the way because that also is very instrumental and which one is more practical when trying to down your opponent so we have everything turned on here so that we get the most accurate results as possible so as far as time to kill go to the head the growl and the m13 are going to give you the best time to kill the only downside to the m13 is that you can't really engage anything farther than 114 meters so you're going to really struggle to get your bullets to hit your target so that's where the growl is going to start to take over but again you have to consider this is shots to the head how often are you going to get a headshot from that range you know you have to think about practicality in that sense so i would probably give the edge to the m13 for headshots because it's a lot more convenient to shoot your opponents from this range right here versus then plus 100 meters so let's go ahead and change this to the chest and the story does change here just a little bit the growl was one of the best at long range now it's in third place so for here i would give the mid-range edge to the kilo and the long range edge is going to go to the m13 as you can see here it has the lowest time to kill now i do understand that the cr56 does have a farther damage range versus the m13 in this scenario however the cr56 only has 45 round mags you're going to be running out of ammo fairly constantly when you're trying to engage in this range so that's why i would give the edge to the m13 if you're going to engage in long range and you're going to shoot the enemy at the chest then next we have the growl and then after that the other weapons just aren't as viable versus these three that i mentioned here let's go ahead and change this to the stomach so the chest and the stomach are the most important factors here that we're going to be taking a look at because that is where people most commonly shoot at anyway so again taking a look at these stats the m13 does dominate up to about 114 meters then after that it's the growl the growl simply takes over it has more damage range and also it has the lowest time to kill versus the kilo 141 and the m4a1 now as far as shooting the opponent at the legs we don't really want to take this data too seriously because how often are you shooting your opponents at the legs especially from long distance now i'm only focusing on long distance engagement and the main reason why is because your close range engagements you're supposed to leave that up to your smgs which are going to have a much faster time to kill from closer ranges and that's why it's very important to run with an smg as a secondary with that overkill perk in conclusion as far as time to kill and damage range goes i would have the m3 13 growl and kilo for top three and then m4 will come in at number four and then the cr56 will come in dead last now let's talk about practicality and what is most easy to use for the casual gamer and that's why i didn't really rank the growl as a top two gun in the game because if you've used the growl at really long range yes this time to kill is amazing the damage range is really great for almost all the damage profiles here but if you've actually ever tried to engage in long range combat with the growl it's not as competitive as the kilo and the m13 and let's go ahead and take a look at the recoil patterns to show you exactly what i'm talking about now we're going to do a wall test and we're going to try to control the recoil patterns of all of the five previous loadouts that i showed you and then we're going to go ahead and compare and contrast which recoil pattern diameter is actually the tightest so keep in mind these recoil patterns might not be super perfect but there will be a definitive answer of which recoil patterns are the best so let's go ahead and start off with the kilo setup here and i'm just going to point and aim down here and i'm going to try to control that recoil as much as i can all right then i'm going to go ahead and switch to my m13 loadout so the first couple bullets are rather difficult to control but if we're going to compare the kilo to the m13 you can see that these two recoil patterns are very very small fairly similar in diameter size all right so now we've got our m4 loadout and we're going to do the same thing and try to control that recoil all right now let's switch over to our growl all right so there is a pretty good amount of bounce there now, as you can see here, the M4 does have less of a recoil versus the growl. All right, now I've got my CR56. We're going to scoot over here, and we're going to go ahead and try to control that recoil. All right. 
So taking a look at the CR56, that recoil control is not that bad. If anything, we can compare this very closely to either the M13 or the Kilo. Now, the reason why I rank this dead last at number five overall is because of the magazine size. The magazine size is just way too small. 45 round mags is simply not enough. So that automatically puts it at rank number five. And then Growl is gonna be rank number four. And then next we're gonna have the M4, then the M13, and then the Kilo. Now, now the reason why why I rank the M13 ahead of the Kilo is simply because of the mobility of the weapon and also the time to kill. The time to kill absolutely dominates versus the Kilo. So the Kilo has laser beam accuracy, but all that doesn't really matter unless your time to kill is fast. Let me know down below in the comments which ARs would you rank as your top five no recoil weapons and also the user friendliness of them as well. So leave a like on this video if you did enjoy. Make sure to subscribe if you're new around here and it's very important to turn on notifications or you will not be notified when I do post a new video and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.